So we've taken a look at the best guns in Cold War Zombies plenty of times. We've examined the meta and, and basically the weapons that you absolutely want to use if you want to do well. But one thing we really haven't done is take a look at the sleeper picks. This is going to be the top 10 best underrated weapons that don't get the most amount of attention in Cold War Zombies. However, they might have like an attribute or something that makes them absolutely stellar. A lot of these sleeper picks are very comparable to what are literally the best guns in the game. So if you're looking for a slight variation of the weapons you've been using, then this video is going to be just for you and I'm also going to give you guys like some attachment recommendations on these uh where I see fit and otherwise that said if you guys enjoyed the video today I would really appreciate a thumbs up subscribe if you're brand new to the channel and uh let's get started coming in at the number 10 spot is going to be the nail gun and while I can't recommend it for like every situation in this game I will say it is unbelievably unique as a weapon it fires a very slow moving projectile that is quite different to how the bullets feel typically in this game but the thing you'll get with the nail gun especially when pack a punch is a significantly better magazine size and the nails also do insanely well against armor so like things like manglers or even panzer specifically the nail gun is definitely going to thrive however I wouldn't use it as a primary weapon always because it just doesn't like have the fire rate and and sometimes the upfront dps that you need to like clear out enemies and stuff but it's a good like methodical take out zombies from a distance sort of thing or really shredding armored enemies that's about where the extent of its uses go I will say though it is just a ton of fun to play regardless of it being a great weapon or not coming in at the number nine spot are going to be probably the least talked about weapons in the pistol class and these are the marshals now they behave a little bit more like a shotgun than an actual pistol and i feel like these had the potential to possibly be the best gun in the game like i'm not kidding now the only thing that's really holding it back i mean there's two things it's lack of real distance in terms of range and also it's magazine size even when pack a punch they still only hold three per gun although you can dual wield them and they also have a unique mechanic called dragon's breath which will deal more damage to zombies uh, when you hit them but the trade-off is if you're too close then you take damage as well so it's a little bit uh, it can be kind of off-putting for players and because you actually have to be so close as its range is very poor then you're gonna end up taking damage quite a lot just from yourself which is a little bit annoying to use with the marshals and again the dragon's breath also visually makes it look like the range is a lot more than it really is it's very strange that being said I'm not trying to just completely dunk on this weapon, but it's it's got problems, but overall, in terms of how much damage it can put out, especially on high rounds, and if you can fire it and get it into a sense where you can fire one gun at a time and reload the other while you're firing your offhand gun, that's actually a pretty good solution to always have constant firepower out instead of having to go downtime to reload, because you can still kill basically a max health zombie with one shot of this, uh, considering it's fully upgraded, so they are good, just not my favorite. Taking the number eight spot is the PPSH SMG, which is definitely, you know, the zombies community sweet prince. Uh, it's basically been the SMG that defines this game. However, in Cold War, I think it got a little bit less attention than it otherwise would because that was one of the most updated class sets in the entire game. And Cold War released a ton of absolutely stellar, beefy SMGs that unfortunately just outshine the PPSH in a lot of cases. That being said, it's still an excellent weapon, don't get me wrong. And with the right attachments, it can go insane using the drum magazine it can have one of the best magazine sizes in the whole game now this is going to be primarily for just shooting regular zombies because i gotta be honest the pbsh it's absolutely grim against armor don't fight panzers or you know high round manglers with it it's not worth it but doing anything else the pbsh will feel great the only other issue it's got is the recoil can be somewhat difficult to keep control of and that's why i recommend the barrel with a little bit more vertical recoil control because of how you you know rewarded headshots are in this game and landing them consecutively you kind of need to do that with the PPSH and it also does great with hip fire so as much as you can manage that as possible to make your experience with this weapon a ton better coming in at the number seven spot is going to be the LW3 Tundra sniper rifle this one is actually a launch sniper and as far as I'm concerned there really isn't another sniper rifle in zombies that is more practical than the Tundra like obviously there's a few that's better cut out for maybe just fighting regular zombies maybe there's a few that's cut out for certain game modes but in terms of what you're going to get the most bang for your buck out of so to speak it's going to be the tundra and especially when paired with something like ring of fire you can deal like literally elite
illegal amounts of damage to boss enemies it's not great obviously at fighting tons of enemies at once and that's why for to run this optimally you're gonna have to pair it with something maybe like a wonder weapon or signi something significantly faster firing but otherwise there is no right answer for attachments however you can make this a little bit more of like attack rifle almost or you can play it as a sniper rifle with a proper scope that might help you to you know hit critical hits a little bit more there's a lot of room for experimentation but especially this is going to be properly and optimally used with ring of fire against boss enemies that's practically what it's made for I'm genuinely surprised there wasn't a sniper rifle added to Cold War post-launch that basically, you know, eclipsed the Tundra in terms of effectiveness. This gun is still absolutely insane. Coming in at number 6 is the Ironhide Shotgun. Now, this one unfortunately gets a little bit overshined by all the other selections in the game, and this one is lever action as opposed to something like the Hauer, which is pump action. Now, they do behave very similar in terms of, like, their practical uses in-game, and on paper, I feel like I should like the Ironhide better and its attachment setup in terms of optimization is pretty cut and dry there's not really much else you could run on this but basically the only problem with the iron hide despite its great damage and pretty insane range it doesn't have the fire rate to keep up with cold war zombies pace there's even an attachment that slightly increases the fire rate but i've used it and it still just doesn't feel like enough i've played outbreak high rounds which i compare directly the howard to the iron hide and it just can't keep up with everything that's going on it's really good on like low to mid rounds but once you start getting max spawns and max zombie health, it just doesn't, you, you'll, you'll know what I mean. It just feels like you're always uh, falling behind in terms of keeping the crowd under control. Where something like the Howard can sort of match the Horde, the Ironhide falls behind a little bit on. But it does great against boss enemies, does great in general, and it's, I guess, just a, maybe a slight downgrade to the Howard. But it's still insanely fun to use, and it, not to mention has much better range than that gun as well. Taking the number 5 spot is legitimately a viable alternative to the M16, or basically any other TAC rifle. This is the Carve 2, and while you may have heard me talk about this before, and I've certainly included this on a best weapons list, I think that I finally found maybe what is the sweet spot, or at least the optimization for this gun. Now, the attachment that's most important is, oddly enough, uh, not the stock, it's not the grip, it's the barrel. And I found that usually I run the Task Force barrel on most of my weapons, it increases damage the most, and that's where you'll see a lot of its benefit. However, I actually think the Strike Team Barrel is probably optimal for the Carve 2. Reason being, it both increases the damage, not to the degree that the Task Force 1 does, but it also increases the fire rate, and that is the combination that gives this weapon its sauce, and I think that's really where it's best played. It may not have the highest damage per bullet compared to what it could have with a different barrel, but that, when it's compensated through the fire rate, feels much better, and it makes the gun actually feel a little bit more like an assault rifle than an actual attack rifle, but it hits like an absolute truck so i think this is an incredibly viable alternative to the m16 i think it can do practically anything that gun can do and i would more than strongly recommend to take this gun in game if you've never done so before it's excellent coming in at the number four spot is the mac 10 smg and i've definitely put this on best weapons list before and it certainly deserves that spot as i think it's incredibly underrated this weapon has the privilege of just being an absolute bullet hose however it does need some attachments to compensate because the base weapon isn't actually all that good now, what it does shine at is taking on large amounts of enemies at once. That's practically what it's designed for. However, I will say it does have the same weakness as the PPSH. Doesn't do great against armor, and that's definitely something you're going to want to have a separate gun to take on. But the MAC-10, just in terms of fighting regular zombies, is probably one of the best guns in the game at doing so. Its hip fire is so good, you hardly ever have to touch your aim button if you really don't want to. It's I, I'm, like, I'm not kidding. Like I said, just make sure you are running some something that's a bit more uh, optimized to deal with uh, elite enemies and bosses, armored, stuff like that, but everything else the MAC-10 uh, does a great job at, and I cannot recommend enough. It's definitely one of the better SMGs that I still feel like gets slept on a little bit in Cold War just because there are so many good SMGs. This one just doesn't quite have the spotlight it maybe should. Coming in at the number three spot is going to be the crossbow. Unfortunately, no options for attachments on this or any way to change it really, but I think a lot of people slept on this gun, and it also does not behave like any other crossbow we've seen in previous Call of Duty titles. However, that being said, there is a way to absolutely break this weapon, and that's by using Ring of Fire, because then you no longer have to re-bolt as you're shooting. And I'm not sure if they changed it, but it used to literally delete Ordas, and uh, I, I don't know if it still does that with Ring of Fire. However, it still has the capability where you don't have to re-bolt it while using it. So, it's pretty broken when uh, Pack-a-Punch, and it also does great with Speed Cola because of that faster re-bolting time. That's really its only hindrance, but 
but other than that, it's a phenomenal weapon. Nearing the top of our list and coming in at the number two spot is the EM2 assault rifle, and very similar to the SMG class, this also got a ton of new additions throughout the year, and I think the EM2 is certainly one of the best, undeniably. Now, the only downside is its fire rate is quite slow, and there's not really anything you can do about that, but everything else is stellar, and especially with this optimized attachment setup, you can do some real damage to not only regular zombies, but also does great against bosses too. The only real weakness is crowd control can sometimes be a bit difficult with the EM2, but when paired with something else that you can, you know, clear out things quickly or th have a weapon that's a bit more of a panic option, the EM2 is uh, really good at just methodically taking out zombies, especially if you're just training and you have a lot of room to work with. It certainly rewards accuracy and is by no means a panic option of a weapon, so definitely use it to its strengths and mitigate its weaknesses, but otherwise, one of my favorite guns to play, I don't know why I like it so much. It may be the look of it and also the feel, the damage, and how beefy it is, but I don't know. Big fan of the EM2. Absolutely love it. Now, before we get to our number one spot, I'm going to give two honorable mentions to some melee weapons. I often don't include melee weapons on my best weapons ranking, but these two are different, and they certainly deserve it. The first one being the size, and these are incredibly interesting because they are one of the only guns in the game that fundamentally change your movement, and it's insane because this is basically the weapon you want to use to have that classic Black Ops 3 like bunny hop movement and while it's not identical it's pretty close and I wish more guns either had this or like more weapons could use this mechanic but otherwise it's very unique to these and then the other one being the e-tool which is just as far as I'm concerned the most practical melee weapon its damage is absolutely off the charts and the rate at which you can swing it is insane probably a better DPS than many actual bullet weapons in the game which has it has no right to go that hard but it certainly does honestly some of the most interesting weapons in the game happen to be melee and maybe I'll make a video specifically going more detail into those but we'll see but finally coming in at the number one spot are unfortunately the most outshined pistols just because of the amp 63s but these have been in the game since day one the diamatis are absolutely ludicrous and the more I use them the more I realize how deceptively broken they actually are there isn't like a single thing at which it really doesn't do well at now I will say the reason it gets outshined is because it's a little bit less controlled and precise than the amp 63s and when that really comes down to like intense situations high rounds or boss fights then you're gonna need that extra precision but if you're just playing zombies regularly and shooting around having fun then these do probably maybe even a better job than the amp 63s at taking on sheer hordes of enemies and I'm a massive fan of it now uh, it does need attachments a little bit to get it to where it's optimized but that doesn't seem to be too big of a problem but they are probably one of the most underrated weapons in the whole game but anyways guys definitely let me know what you thought on my list down below if there's any other underrated guns that should have been on this list let me know what that was but drop a like if you guys enjoyed subscribe if you're brand new and i also stream over on twitch if you don't follow me and you want to watch some zombies link to that's in the description i would love to see you there but have a great rest of your day guys and i will see you all in the next one